G'day, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Mate Sports Betting Podcast, episode 103. Today, as you can see, I'm joined by pretty regular guest on the podcast, professional sports better Neil Shah. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. It's really good, Alex. Yeah, so um, I know you, you, you're struggling for guests this week, so uh, yeah, you called to keep a sub on, as always. <laughs> you're very you're very trustworthy, mate. You're very trustworthy. You're always ready to go. You just want to catch up with me, man. I mean... Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> you see more of your psychedelic light show. That's what it is. Just ready for oh, a rave. It's, it's very <laughs> fancy set up here now, mate. Um you uh there's lots there's lots going on in your life that probably aren't people aren't too familiar with um you know recently because uh, i don't know probably haven't had you on for at least a couple of months but you've had a few things change or you're about to undertake a new journey um and also it's been about one year i'd say since you made the turn to becoming a professional sports better so i thought yeah, we can kind of cover what the, what what's in store for you next, and then I guess recap how this how this year has gone. I mean, you just posted on Twitter that you've turned over one million pounds with Trade Mate Sports, which is uh, quite incredible, mate. I'm worried about you, mate. You've uh, you've worked <laughs> a bit too hard in the last year. Um, but yeah, I guess mate, we might as well just start off and say like, ask how the how you found the last year and. Yeah, how the journey's treated you, mate. I mean, it hasn't treated your hair that well, as we know. It's it's it's, it's dropped it. off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. At least it's not grey yet. So uh, no. you know, that's coming. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's been all. I mean, almost a year. I think uh, I started in July. Um, I mean, I mean, I st- I'd say I started in July. To be honest, I was probably. I was still doing stuff sort of, um, you know, the month before. So, yeah, it probably has been a year since I finished up at my school. and I could sort of devote sort of full-time um, hours to this. And, uh, yeah, it's been quite a journey. Lots of highs and lows. Um, you know, there's some things that I'm still rubbish at. Uh, you know, that I've sort of, I think I've got worse at some things. Um, but other things, you know, I've learned a hell of a lot on this journey um and i think sort of gradually sort of found my niche areas found the things that work for me um and yeah i mean trade mate's been just a huge part of that it's been uh um to be honest when i first started and i first spoke to you um i thought let's see how it goes it'd be interesting i thought well you know i'm i'm a bit of a cheap guy i don't want to pay like the subscription fee i thought let me see if i can work with you guys uh you know do a bit of work and then maybe get the software for free and that's all i thought really i thought okay yeah maybe it looks interesting when i tried it on the trial um you know i think i had marathon bet on there and i sort of made a little profit on it so i thought oh yeah this actually works um never in my wildest dreams would i think that you know i was able to generate sort of the profits that i did um but the profits to the side you know just be able to turn over that much um you know for, for me to find those edges to um you know to, to do that and just um you know having the chats with you um all the podcasts listening to all the guests are there um you know and connecting with some of those guests as well so i've sort of messaged some some of the guys who've been on these podcasts you know interesting people in the industry really smart people um and you know they've they've, they've got they've replied to me and they've been really helpful so um yeah it's been a, it's been a long journey but it's uh i think it's been a good one i think i'm really glad that this happened and i I did this and um yeah quite excited for the future yeah i I think one of the most underestimated things or something you don't even think about when when you think about going professional you go professional is how important relationships are in the the industry so do you want to speak a little bit about that about you know some of the relationships you've built and how much they have you know, helped you out in maybe finding new strategies or bouncing ideas off people because, I mean, myself personally, it's just I would almost say that, like, you know, most of my edge or, you know, most of the the profits I'm able to accumulate nowadays is just from talking to smart people like yourself and all the all the people that have come on the podcast. Yeah, definitely. I'm just very kind. I wouldn't class myself in that that category and there's kind of part of my um you know coming on these shows is kind of basically to say look again it's something that anyone watching can do if they've got the motivation and the desire to do it 
um, and the work ethic. That's the most important thing, you know. Um, and yeah, I think just kind of staying humble. There's a lot of people out there who are smarter than me, um, but that's fine, you know. And I think that, but it, that's a good thing. Um, there's there's people to learn from. There's people to ask questions, you know. I think if you're curious, you're inquisitive, you're, um, and, you know, and, and you do reach out to people, you'd be surprised how many people do actually um, email you back or you know send you a message, and they might not give away all of their secrets, but they'll give you enough sometimes just to kind of um, experiment, just kind of figure out things for yourself. And um, yeah, definitely. So I've, I've learned a lot just about, um, you know, not just kind of using things on TradeMate, but, um, you know, other value betting techniques. Um, obviously, I, there's no betting shops here in Qatar that, that I know of. Uh, but, you know, again, when I go back to England, that's something, you know, that, that's definitely an avenue to explore. I never knew about this before, again, talking mm. to contacts, um, uh, you know, back, back in the UK. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's just a ton of stuff. The, the problem really is um, time and, you know, trying not to kind of overload yourself with too much information. A lot of people who, you know, do this for a living, you know, I'm sure they'll tell you less is more. And probably over time, they've specialized in particular things. And they might do the, you know, the odd thing um, here or there, but there's kind of one or two things that they're kind of their bread and butter. Um, and you know, I think that's that's a big part of of what I've learned as well. So um, yeah, I mean, some some great people, you know, from, from the pod that I, I listen to, um, and yeah, without kind of naming lots of names, because I think it's it's also um, what's relevant to you. So you know, maybe some of the stuff that's a bit more kind of hardcore. Um, some of your guests that have been on that are more kind of maths based or you know, model based, that's kind of stuff that I'm interested in now, but maybe not for all your viewers. And there might be other, um, you know, for example, like, um, uh, again, uh, Ryan, you know, just for the smart uh, sports trader, um, you know, he's, he's a real knowledgeable expert on UFC, but it's not, it's not a sport that I follow necessarily, um, you know, the occasional one that I know, but I know that there's lots of people who, who do benefit from that, you know, and, and again, you're a big fan of it. Um, so I think, it, it, yeah, it also depends on what kind of sports you're following, what kind of things you're doing as well, how you can incorporate it into, I mean, if you were to kind of follow, I mean, this is the what, 103rd episode, uh, how many guests have you had on? Do you know roughly sort of in oh, that time? I'd say roughly about 50, something like that, maybe a bit more. Yeah. So imagine, I mean, that, let's say that's 50 people to follow on Twitter kind of 50 people's articles or books yeah. or you know that, that's that that's gonna keep you busy for a while so um <laughs> but but the possibilities are endless you know you kind of just pick and choose who, but, who you're interested in yeah but the thing with listening to a podcast too is that it's it might go for an hour and 58 minutes of it is just stuff you already knew like it's just someone talking about why they think closing ev is great and I'm just like, yep, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, they'll just say this sentence or this, they'll go on this run of words for a minute or two and you'll be like, oh, my God, I've never thought of it like that. And your your mind just goes in a different place. Whereas, I don't know, maybe something five minutes before that this person said uh, has like, you know, lit the light bulb for someone else, if you know what I mean. So. It, it, it is an investment, I guess, listening to an hour-long podcast, but it's like it's like anything, you know. You're not going to, like, listen to an hour-long podcast and every single word's going to be, like, opening up another avenue for you. It, it's just that little that little nugget, as we like to say. Yeah, completely. And, um, yeah, no, very much so. I'm sure that applies to, like, most of my chats. Probably people fast forward through most of them. <laughs> there's, there's a few things in there that I've given away unintentionally that you know might be of use um but yeah and it's the same thing like even with my um prep when i try you know trade the football i've listened to loads of podcasts and again you know probably half it is just kind of waffle it's just opinion with no basis mm. but they will pull out you know the occasional stats here or there which are actually quite relevant and it kind of makes it uh worthwhile and i think that's the biggest thing probably and a, and a takeaway from this year i didn't realize how much time i would be spending doing this i was kind of maybe a little bit overconfident um 
in terms of how much time I could spare for study, for other things, how much sort of just time to just sort of chill out I would have, you know, because to be honest, I don't really watch TV or, um, you know, I sold my PlayStation. It's just gathered dust, you know, for the last year. Oh, mate. That's so, depressing. Yeah, 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 because, because the, I mean, the other thing is because if you're stuck in front of a screen all day, the last thing you want to do is just, yeah. in your leisure time, is just spend more screen time doing, you know, something else. So, um, but that's something, again, you know, that I, I didn't realize, and especially in terms of things like study, how much, you know, I wanted to try and learn more. Um, but because your mind is occupied and uh, doing all of this, I mean, uh, I know, like, let's say, An Andrew Mack, you know, the, the guy who does the statistical modeling. I mean, yeah. in one of his podcasts, I, I learned that he was studying to be a lawyer and he was doing um, a master's in data science and hunting full time. And I just, I just can't figure out how on earth, um, you know, he found the time because, um, yeah, I'm at capacity, you know, most weeks and uh it, it's difficult i could scale back but i think um that's another thing as well for, for people to say is you know you need to, where is your kind of limit or your mm. point because in theory it's forever there's just bets being turned over 24 7. um and that's something i find really difficult um that to kind of know when to kind of stop i kind of keep going until you know my eyes are dropping and um, i just need some sleep and uh, I guess, you know, that's the, the, the healthiest way to do it. But um, that's something as well for people to kind of think about. You've got to kind of set your time limits, be quite disciplined in terms of how many hours you're going to do. Um, and that's easier said than done. You know, if you've had a losing day and a horrendous run, uh, you know, it's just natural. You'll want to kind of just keep going and keep going to try and recover that. Um, not necessarily overstake, but just in terms of spend more time to try and get yourself back um, to that position. So I think that's another thing, definitely. I've, uh, you know, I've, 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 I suppose I didn't think about so much in the beginning. Yeah. So you look back, like, you know, starting this time last year, how do you, how do you think it's all gone? Do you think you've overachieved, underachieved? Like, do you look back on the journey and think, I wish I'd never started? Like, how do you look back on it all now? Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. So I um, I, I think in the first or second uh, po uh, podcast I did with you, I mentioned I did this sort of flashy PowerPoint and uh, did a kind of prediction of the year and sort of calculations and all of this stuff. And it's really interesting looking back because some of the, some of the things were pretty much bang on. Um, you know, even things like I predicted. You know, I'm going to have like wastage. I'm going to have accounts that are locked. Or you know, just just dealing with just annoying cookies, um, and that's happened. But I kind of accounted for that. The, um, I think for trade mate, I, I put like a sort of profit, average profit, which is like um, fairly low. I think. I mean, for 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 my bank size, I think it was maybe around one and a half, like two grand, maybe a month. You know, that was a kind of optimistic estimate, um, and I'll probably say I've averaged, you know, like average more than double that um so that's been you know re really good positive uh my exchange trading um i sort of put a kind of maximum loss um and a kind of you know optimistic profit i've got nowhere near it i've just been just just been absolute shite like just this year <laughs> uh, just trading has just been uh it's just a horror show um i kind of thought i've made you know again taken two steps forward but then taken three steps back um, and it's been a struggle, but I think my stubbornness means that I'm I'm not going to give up on it. I'm you know if it takes me ten years to turn a profit uh, on the exchange, then I will. Um, and if anyone out there who's listening to this has some kind of solid strategies, you know, if you could kind of kind of help me out, then you know feel free because I have done lots of things, tried lots of things. Some things do work for a while, but um, yeah, it's just it's just been a challenge. Um, and then I suppose other things were, I guess, related to sort of getting accounts from people, um, you know, from making new friends. And uh, so that's been sort of, there's been kind of fits and spurts to that. So there's been periods where it's been difficult um, and other times where I've kind of had, you know, lots of people who are interested to kind of partner up with me. So that, that hasn't been an issue as well. Um, one of the things as well that I counted for was, I suppose, like being scammed. 
um, you know, because it was going to happen, going to happen eventually. So helping out people if, if I go beyond my sort of close friend circle. Um, and again, you know, sadly, there was one person. It wasn't that much, you know, in the grand scheme of things, but it was just still annoying. Um, so I think overall, I kind of sort of predicted a fair amount of things, reasonably happy, um, but uh, some things turned out better. You know, again, like trade mate turned out much better than I thought. Um, I found new angles that I hadn't even planned for in the beginning. So things like we talked about, like the accumulators and kind of like, doubling up accumulators. Um, I did a couple of things myself, you know, like developed a couple of sort of scraper bots, value in the markets. Um, and again, that was a kind of added bonus. So I think overall, yeah, it's, it's in that sense, it's, it's gone, you know, better than I thought. Uh, but still some challenges, still a lot of things that I want to kind of work on. Um, but I think the, the the key thing from this is actually I've been able to, sort of um, transition away from my old career as a teacher. So now, actually, um, I had quite a few interviews the last few weeks. Um, so some sort of big change in my life is actually we're moving back to the UK. Mm. Uh, so, so my wife has left her, her job and you know, we, our, our daughter's quite young. Um, our parents are getting older. So we just kind of thought this is the right time. Um, annoyingly, not quite getting to the World Cup. But uh, yeah, we're, we'll be moving back um, probably in July. And so I've been sort of applying for jobs, you know, looking for roles. And um, I did get offered a couple of jobs in, in, in schools, um, but I turned them down because uh, I had opportunities to work in the betting industry. And, you know, these are kind of dream jobs for me. And um, again, I think through all the stuff I've done this year, um, you know, the, the podcasts and things I've done with you, uh, the articles, uh, you know, things like that, which are all, you know, th th these are things, if, if you're interested in getting into the industry and breaking in, um, this is basically, that's how I've done it. You know, this is not, um, I mean, I had a little bit of experience like a decade ago um, at one bookmakers, but, you know, that, to be honest, it's all, that, that doesn't really count. So it's all based on what I've done this year. That I've been able to get these interviews and, and to get a role. Um, so I think anyone who's listening to this, who's, who's interested in pursuing that path, you know, you, you can kind of make your own experience really by just kind of learning, connecting with people out there. Um, you know, a few of these interviews just came about just through messaging people on LinkedIn just to kind of say, look, oh, you know, this is what I've been doing this year. Um, I'm looking to, you know, have a kind of formal career path. Um, and you know, try and break in, and then people were receptive. So, um, so yeah, so I have a role that's starting soon. So I'm quite excited about that. Yeah, the sports betting industry is it's very um, it's quite easy to get into. I would say, like you yeah, can yeah. if you, if you look at a lot of the job ads out there to I don't know become like a junior trader somewhere or. I don't know, even even like myself, you know, getting a job in marketing to begin with, like the 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 job description, like one of the main things or the thing that you see on every job description is like you like sports. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> well, I mean, I fulfill that pretty easily. And so yeah, so it's one thing that I've noticed, like talking to various people throughout the industry is not like I mean, nowadays it's getting a bit more advanced and, you know, some people need to have degrees in mathematics or, you know, have some kind of maybe developing background or whatever you want to call it. But it, it, it really is like, I mean, I've, I've been able to meet some of, the, some of the best minds in betting and I've, I've only really been working at TradeMate less than two years. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a very, I think it's a very cool industry in that sense that like and it's great advice you just said mate like if you if you like sports betting if you understand like how it actually works and the ins and outs and how to actually make money from this you can you know you can very easily get yourself a a, a job in the industry that that you really enjoy and i mean it might not be like the the highest paying job you know of all time but it, it might be like a really fun job and you know working on sports and all this kind of stuff and listening to various podcasts who so i know that there are sports betters and and even bookmakers who don't want to employ people who have been involved in the betting industry they kind of want people to come in with a 
with a fresh mind, maybe a mathematics background or something like that, uh, and not have any um, bias, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, you know what, actually, that, that's a really, really good point that you've made. So sort of in, yeah, and this is something I'm, I'm happy to share as well for anyone who's interested. So in this kind of process, so there were a few roles that I applied for, um, again, that I, I didn't get, and the feedback. So one of them was as a, um, a cricket trader. It was basically, it's a grad job. It's a graduate job, you know, for people straight out of uni. Um, but um, I didn't even get shortlisted. Uh, for this one um, and the feedback was basically because exactly what you said they didn't want someone who was already um, let's say experienced or understood um, you know a betting they wanted someone who was kind of let's say a blank slate I think there's different reasons for it my suspicion is also um, maybe they had concerns that you know you, you might be spending too much time in your free time betting and and trading I, I get that impression because uh, it was something that was important for me you know in all these processes with all the interviews i had was i was quite transparent and honest because look to be honest um i i feel quite confident i could make more than uh, at this stage now um from from my own personal betting than i could with with a job but obviously uh, i have a family i need a mortgage um i have practical reasons that i want to get a job in the industry and also look you're going to learn a lot from from actually working in the industry because uh, however much you know you you might um, be knowledgeable do, you know doing this by yourself you're going to make mistakes you're going to have bad habits and i think that's the thing if you teach yourself things sometimes you know you don't always uh, have the full toolkit available to you so i think you can it, you know it can only be a benefit to to get some kind of industry exposure to work with smart people who've been doing this a long time um, but yeah it, it's very interesting what you say um, again, you know, one, one other role I went for, they gave me a, um, a test to do. Um, I, mean, I did okay on the test, but I wasn't one of the highest performing ones. And, you know, straight away, that's what they wanted were people who would, um, who are mathematicians, who could just kind of nail this test. Um, the other stuff wasn't so important for them. So I think it also depends on the company or what specifically they're looking for. And if you're looking to go into, uh, the modeling side of things or, you know, to be kind of um, a quant, um, the salaries are much better, you know, significantly better um, because the work is, I, I personally think it, the work is more challenging, it's harder. You need a certain kind of um, mind to, to do that kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I haven't got that math skill. I hope in the future I can get somewhere close to it. But um, again, those, those kind of roles, you know, you might want to look at that or developer roles um, so, yeah, the coding and the maths is becoming more important. But, you know, again, you don't necessarily need it. Even the role that I have, the minimum requirement was five GCSEs. Um, you know, just get a decent grade in English and maths. And again, you know, do you like sports? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that's kind of enough to get you an interview. And then, obviously, yeah. the, the interview stage is where you really can sell yourself. But, um, you know, that's where you can do your preparation on the company, on the odds. Again, you just there's so much free stuff on the internet, just on the trade mate site. You know, other things out there as well where you can just kind of brush up and uh, make that impression. So yeah, definitely. If it's anyone who's looking to to do that, um, and you know what, feel free to get in touch about that as well. I'm happy to share the experiences that I've had. You know, again. Um, applying for these roles and and uh, you know that's something you're you're really interested in. the other good thing is you know because we've got a worldwide audience here on on trade mate more and more of these roles are remote um so the role that i'm doing again part of it being a dream job is that i can just sit at home in my pajamas and and uh, you know do my trading uh, i don't have to commute or do anything like that so if that's something you you enjoy working from home I think the industry is changing and I think it's going that way. There's going to be more and more roles like that as well. Yeah, very, very true, mate. Um, I'll backtrack a little bit to something you said before and you talked a little bit about what hasn't worked or at least not up to your expectation of what you thought it might work and that was your exchange trading. Do you want to kind of go into that a bit more and explain, yeah, why it hasn't worked out, how you thought and... I mean, you mentioned that you've tried out all sorts of strategies and nothing's really worked for you. For me, on the outset, it seems like something that 
a lot of people, uh, you know, devote a lot of time to and sometimes it never really works out for them. So, yeah, explain that for me. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, there, there are some things that, that have worked. There's some things that I think would would work. Um, again, other strategies where maybe I haven't given it enough time, for example. Um, and it's also, I have to bear in mind, it's been a strange season as well, very surreal mm. football season so one you know the main sport that i trade is football um but actually you know for example let's say on, on cricket i was doing very well on the ipl um and then everyone decided to get covid and they had to cancel it um so you know, so there are some sports where i was actually making a lot of progress even in the tennis you know uh i will uh you know actually try and trade the, um, the french open there's qualifiers today so now the football season is over um, you know, I will kind of turn my attention to it, and so perhaps maybe um, I'm more suited to, to to that. So I'm I'm, I'm not sure, but um, yeah. So you know, again, there's there's sort of different things I I, I try. Um, what I found is that you know I've been able to have you know good runs, um, some very good wins, and and generally my selection process um, hasn't been too too bad. So I'm picking you know the right games. Um, but you know, I mean, there's been, I've lost count of the, the amount of times where let's say I've had a game where, you know, both sides have had, I don't know, 10 shots on target, 20 corners and it's ended nil, nil, you know, um, there, there's been games where again, you know, it's just been kind of relentless pressure from one side. The stats pre-match show that, you know, both teams are good for goals or one team is good from this position. Um, but it hasn't quite quite worked i do know a few people who do they use um kind of more contrarian approach um let's say trading on unders um i, I personally i find that just a very difficult thing to do it's just an unpleasant it's almost statistic um because i can't watch those games i mean i know they do and what they do so look here you go uh, this is like 30 seconds of useful knowledge out of this if anyone <laughs> wants it um so if you look for games where there's there's um, teams generally don't have a record of scoring in the first 15 minutes, um, but you know their goal stats generally are quite good, then you, then you might get some value on the under two and a half and under three and a half goal markets. The other thing is what you do is that this the, the time decay on the three and a half goals market on 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 the exchange there are crossover points. So basically. Um, you know, if, if you've used the exchange before, you'll see how the prices move by one tick. And then, you know, when you get to odds of, um, you know, over two by two ticks, over three, you know, by five ticks. So what happens is, you know, um, there'll be a crossover point where the ticks are worth more. So each tick is worth more. Um, so you can kind of use that to your advantage. And again, so you can kind of be in and out of a position. So you would have to use kind of big stakes to make it worth your while. But you can kind of look at games that you expect there's going to be a slow start and get out of your position after 10, 15 minutes. Um, but, you know, uh, for me, there's still issues in terms of, again, if, if you get two quick goals, you know, you're you're screwed. And the times I've tried it, that's what's happened. Um, but it, it's, it's worth looking at that. I think at the Euros, this is, a, this is an angle that I'm going to look at for, for some of these games, I think. Um, and the Copper America as well, just because players have, have had a long season. Um, again, the pressure and the stakes are huge. Generally, at these tournaments, you do get a lot of unders games because of the time of year, because, you know, again, players are a bit leggy. And this year, even more than ever, they've had so many games in such a short space. They didn't have a proper preseason last year. So um, that's an angle to look at as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, again, going back to your, to your point as well. Yeah, just I think. Lots of kind of steps forward, lots of steps back, and I think um, I think trying to take a value betting approach into the exchange also makes it difficult as well. So kind of you know applying what I'm doing with Trade Mate or in other things um, makes it very difficult. I, I know some people who are convinced that they're just it's impossible to find value on the exchange, uh, not all virtually impossible, and virtually impossible on the markets because everyone is, is doing the same thing on a lot of these markets and they're looking at other things. So again, looking at handicap markets, looking at 
first goal scorer markets. Um, you know, um, looking at kind of early prices, um, they're offering up lays rather than you know taking the available prices. So they're kind of offering up lays for match betters, and that's how they're making their profit on the exchange. So I'm sure there are people out there. I'm sure there's going to be people messaging to say, you know, well, Neil, you're just shit. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm making money on it. You're just a retard. So I, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's, I, I'm just being totally honest because it will probably be annoying if I was to say on this that, oh, yeah, I'm doing well on Trade Mate. I'm doing well on the exchange. You know, I'm making loads of money. Oh, it's easy. You know, it's no problem. But it's not. You know, I, I, I'm being honest. I've got no reason to lie. Um, listen, this has been a slog this year and it's hard work. And even with this edge, you know, like again, turning over that much, you know, I'd say the last, I mean, I've probably turned over close to a quarter of a million without much to show for it. I probably made about two grand, you know, over, and that's a hell of a lot of time, you know, that's below minimum wage. That's like, I'm subjecting myself to slave labor to, to, to have just got over the line. So, it happens, you know, and I've had people message me again, you know, to say, look, what's going on, you know, like um, their trade mates been tanking or, you know, they just like, they just can't get a break. And, um, you know, the, the variance is brutal. Um, and on the exchange, you know, things are brutal. You can spend hours researching something and it just doesn't come in. And I think it's been a weird season, you know, there's been, it's just been a very strange uh, year. So there's been opportunities because of that, but also some of the things that the stats are showing something, um, the pre-match stats are showing something, in play it's showing something, you're watching it and you think it's going to happen with your eyes and it just isn't happening. So, um, uh, yeah, I, th I think I'm going to bear that in mind. I mean, to be honest, if, I'm gonna have, if I have the same year as I have this year on the exchange, then it probably is going to be time to sort of pack it in or at least completely modify my approach. But um, uh, yeah, that's, it. That, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Yeah, so if you, I guess if you had your your year over again and you knew everything you knew now, would you would you try some different stuff? Would you maybe veer away from football and do some more tennis, like you were saying, or some more? Yeah, to be honest, I mean, if, I, if I'd just not done the exchange, I would have saved myself loads of time and saved myself plenty of money <laughs> so i probably would have just like just not done the exchange at all um but again the, there's a finite lifespan to what i'm doing and it's always a challenge to um to get accounts and to um to use a soft book so you know again it, it's a it's a learning experience it's it, that's an investment of time to if you're able to find an, anyone out there who's got a few strategies that work on the exchange you know you've got a reliable income source um and and you know you're not going to get restricted so that's why it is worth the effort but um yeah. but yeah definitely i think really sort of bring away i mean i did double i have sort of done some time on the tennis i took a couple of months off um again because i just didn't have the time um but yeah maybe more of a focus on tennis and on cricket um i mean it seems you guys do well on the ufc so maybe it was something to do i traded the eurovision actually this weekend that was a disaster um so i spent like a bit of time uh just reading up on you i mean mate do you want to have, have a guess how much uh the, the how much was traded on betfair for the winner <laughs> of the have a guess mate i didn't even know that competition was on do you know the weirdest thing about eurovision australia are in eurovision yeah they, didn't. they got they didn't get through the semi-final this time but uh yeah farcical <laughs> mate absolutely farcical the best thing about eurovision <laughs> was that uh the, i don't know if you've seen it there's a movie that came out about a a couple from iceland or something i think oh is that the will ferrell one yeah yeah oh mate yeah, yeah, great yeah. movie great movie <laughs> i mean most people hate that movie but oh, i love those kind of movies i think they're super but... fun. <laughs> <laughs> so how much was how much was traded oh mate you have a guess have a guess 100 million pounds all right, okay, that's a bit that's a bit extreme. No, but I think uh, <laughs> last time I checked, there was about five million. And to put that into context, um, that's more than most Premier League games. Okay, actually, more than any Premier League game I've seen. That's around half of like a 
typical maybe IPL game. Um, probably around not far off, like a Champions League final. So that's yeah. for me. That's what piqued my interest. I was like, okay, actually, there's a lot of money in this market, and it's been built up over months and months. So you know, I did a bit of research into it. Um, that's another thing I would recommend people to do is like you know look, um, look at these kind of niche markets yeah. like entertainment betting, like you know, um, you know, Britain's Got Talent or whatever the country is. You know, if, if you have a market for it, um, you know, in the UK these kind of things are quite popular. Um, and something like the Eurovision, that you know, there's a lot of people who sort of pour over this data, you know, you know, um, all year long. Um, and so there was money to be made, and um, yeah, I ended up making a loss. I could have traded out my position. Um, I don't know if anyone was listen, listening to it, watching it. Um, Italy won. I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't think it was going to win. I thought the uh, France was was going to do well. Uh, Malta as well. I had a little position. Malta. Malta. Yeah. Yeah, the great. Oh, I like the song. It was funky. Um, so, That's my heritage, so, yeah. mate. That's oh yeah, you Maltese. I didn't know all this. Oh, oh okay. Vela, mate. Vela's like. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Do you have a famous? I'm trying to think. Like Smith in Australia. It's like the. Okay. Like, right, right, right. Yeah. There you go, mate. Ah, oh, good to know. Good to know. Yeah, you guys. You had a good song. I thought you were gonna do well. <laughs> um, but it didn't happen. Oh yeah. God! What what are we doing, doing, mate? This is an all time really low for the podcast. <laughs> Eurovision, yeah. <laughs> but no, but in all seriousness, this is um, this is how to approach it. You know, there will those, there's going to be people out there who will be sort of um, dismissive of that or just you know scoff at that. But at the end of the day, it depends what kind of trader you are. For me, I'm interested in price. Um, you know, the things that are most profitable for me. A horse racing and golf and i i just could not think of anything more boring than watching horse racing or golf i just i just don't have an interest in it but the price mechanics the value of what you can get if you, if you know if you have a good strategy hmm. make by far the most profitable things that i do last week again you know i had five out of the eight places um you know the byron nelson tournament this week uh, didn't get the winner had uh, uh Kupka, in second place uh, but again you know four of those eight places i didn't watch any of it i just kind of starred the players that i had bets on um you know had a quick look every now and again and then on the last day just again checked check my account but um i think that that's where you got to look at it so going back to what we we're saying about the exchange you know i love football and my new role is um again odds compiling for for football um but <laughs> I haven't been able to do particularly well on the exchange on that, you know, in terms of, but what's interesting is in terms of trade mate on football, you know, that's been doing quite well. So um, pre-match uh, handicaps, you know, pre-match goal lines, um, you know, these all have a viable edge on, uh, on the bookmaker side, you know, but in play, um, you know, on the exchange, that's that's been a bit of a challenge, sort of consistency wise for me. Um, there's been some good months, but I haven't been able to build that run together. So, yeah, I think I think that's something to look at as well. Your your best sport, I've probably said this before in like another podcast, but your best sport to trade or to be profitable on isn't necessarily the one that you're most interested in or kind of passionate about. There's obviously exceptions, but things like again. You can use it to your advantage. So, like for UFC, you know, for yourself, for Ryan, like that's that's an edge in itself because if you follow it closely, you have a lot of kind of casual betters who maybe only watch. I'm guessing they'll only watch like the headline fights. They won't look at the rest of the card in much detail. Uh, I mean, casuals just what, watch Conor McGregor. Think? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah so. All right. Um, how about? Just some, I guess, some general tips for people who are maybe thinking of going professional or, I mean, maybe they haven't even thought about it. And Yeah, I guess just some general tips on, yeah, if you had your time over again, um, yeah, what would you say to them? What would you say to yourself um, in preparing you for the next year? Yeah, I think uh, now looking back over the last year, um I think that there's a lot. There's a lot of things um, that I could say. I would. I mean, first of all, I'd say about making sure you're very good at managing your time. 
So, so a number of reasons, like I mentioned before, um, there's no kind of end point. You could be doing this day in, day out. And even if you're not betting, um, you know, 24 seven, you could be researching, reading up, you know, the amount of information that's out there. Um, you're, you know, th th there's, there's no end to it. So I think being quite strict on your time, being realistic about how much time you can commit to it. Um, that's one thing I think, you know, making sure you've got enough funds in place to do this, to cover bad months. And I think, yeah, like I mentioned before, the variance, just being prepared for variance. I can say I'm prepared for variance, but I wasn't. And I could say I feel like quite confidently from what I've seen from people on the forum, from other people I've spoken to, from the messages I've got from people who just who struggled when they first started or just kind of frustrated. Um, I'd say 95%, 95% of us are not prepared for the variance and don't understand it. And I would say even people who are mathematically minded, they might understand the theory of the variance, but the emotional effect, if you lose 20 bets in a row, if, you, if you've put in, you know, 30 hours of bets that week and you're down, and then the next week you just grind again and um, you're down further, you know, and you're like, no, right, week three, it's going to move up. And it just doesn't. Um, that's hard to take for anyone. And I think that, that is probably the biggest thing out, out of this year is just you have to be prepared for it. Um, you know, I get messages from people a lot. It's just kind of like, oh, uh, they, maybe they're using a bot and they're like, oh, you know, it was a bad two days. Oh, you know, it was a really bad week. Or like, you know, oh, this is, you know, it's rubbish, you know. Or I've had people I've recommended TradeMate to. Look, I've, I've made a full-time income from this, you know, um, this year. Just from, from TradeMate would be enough. It would be a decent salary on its own. Um, it speaks for itself and it works. But again, you know, with all the trip, but the podcasts you're doing, there's people listening to this now, I'm sure, who listen to the podcasts, who, um, you know, they, 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 they're knowledgeable about betting and they haven't taken the plunge with trade mate for whatever reason. Um, or they did it, they gave it a month and they gave up. I know that, you know, if you're listening to this and that's you then in my mind, you've lost out. You know, there might be lots of reasons there, but again, that's because of the variance. You probably had a bad run. No one who's had a good run on TradeMate for a month is going to stop. Um, and, and actually, maybe that's somewhere I've been very lucky because I started off well. I started off on a hot streak, and that keeps your motivation. Because if, if, you, if you win for two or three months straight um, and the next month you, you make a loss, it's not going to affect you in the same way. But if you make a loss the first month, um, you're going to have to have a sort of a decent win the next month. Because if you just about break even the second month, you might be like, well, you know, is it for me? You know, am, am I going to, why, why should I waste my time with this? So I, I think that is by far the biggest thing, just fully preparing yourself that you're going to, you might have a terrible month. You might put in hours and hours and get nothing to show for it. Um, but you need to be prepared for that. And, uh, you know, there's some people who aren't, who are quite risk averse and they won't want to do that. Or they won't like it if they're, they're down. Look, 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 I don't like losing either, but it's part of the, um, the process. So I would, I would definitely say that's top of the list by, by a mile. Yeah. It's, it's gold, mate. Cause yeah, you could, you could, I think I said this too. I was actually listening back to our podcast. We did it, uh, uh, from a year ago. Sorry. And uh, yeah, I think one of the things I said to you is you could be the best sports better in the world and get started on your journey and lose your first hundred bets, and they could all be plus EV greatest bets of yeah. all time. And you lose your first hundred bets, and next thing you know, your your bankroll's you know down to its last few cents. So it's it's a very um, and, and I think I think the biggest thing is that I, I don't know if this is the case for anyone else, but it's definitely the case for me. When I win, I have no emotional reaction. But when I lose, yeah. I have a way more, way more emotional reaction. Like yeah, not, yeah. either sense. way, I don't yell out and scream or whatever. But like <clears throat> inside my heart, it hurts yeah. when I lose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when I win, all I do is go, "Oh, sweet." That is literally my reaction because I. It's almost like you. Ex 
because I know what I'm doing is right, maybe that's it. And yeah. I just expect that's what's going to happen. But when it doesn't work, it's like, oh, that that really hurts. Is that relative to the stakes of using? Like, does it does it annoy you more when it's when it's a bigger bet? Like, if it, is there a sort of like a a, a stake where it's like it doesn't really bother you if it loses? Uh, yeah, I, I think that that definitely plays into it too, doesn't it? If if it's you know if it's your max bet and that keeps losing over and over, yeah. then it's then it's very very frustrating. But um, yeah, I, I think it's just you feel. I think did you write this in one of your articles, maybe, or maybe I was reading another article, and yeah, someone was talking about how you just feel your losses way more than you feel your wins. Yeah, no, that yeah, that's something I mentioned, but it's quite it's quite a common thing. It's it's just human psychology isn't it it's just it, i find that with people here in qatar you know we've got quite a privileged life a lot of us here and you know they'll find something to moan about like uh you know they, they, someone wrote something the other day about um because this, this is the life of luxury i have like on each floor of the tower i live in there's a separate sort of room where you throw your trash it goes down this giant chute and goes downstairs and um you never have to actually put it in a sort of wheelie bin like you do in England. Um, yeah. And someone was just moaning, you know, that, oh, there was some bags left there and, like, you know, in the middle of COVID, it's just outrageous that, um, you know, people would do this kind of thing. I was thinking, you know, maybe it wasn't working because sometimes it doesn't work, you know. And so what are people going to do? You're just going to leave it there. But this kind of melodrama, you know, just, like, picking this one thing that sort of, uh, you know, just gets exaggerated out of control. Um, and yeah, we have a tendency to just focus on the negatives and all these things and not just focus on the negatives, but when the wins come, we kind of expect the wins to keep coming as well. We never, I don't think many of us sort of, when we're on a roll, our first thought is, all right, we're on such a good roll that we're, you know, it, it's going to come down now. Like we kind of, we, we're like, oh, you know, it's too good to be true. But in our heart of hearts, we still expect it to continue um and yeah that that that's tricky that that's a, that's a tricky thing to to overcome it's a it's an emotional roller coaster mate absolutely um, it's especially when you and i've noticed myself when because i'm obviously making the change to making this more serious and going part time with trade made and spending more time betting and i know in the last like month or two you know going from a side gig bit of fun to yeah doing this as a way of making a living which i'm about to do the the losses and the you know, the losses just affect you a lot more so that's another another thing for people to factor in if they're ever thinking about making the change over that yeah when it starts uh factoring how much food you can put on the table <laughs> uh that might sound a bit dramatic but yeah <laughs> no but 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 in uh no but it's, it's in all seriousness it's true like with me i mean as much as uh, you know it, it's been a good year it's, it's, it's tough because i'm paying all the expenses i still got to pay my rent i've still got to pay my bills yeah and, you know, and uh, over here that's not cheap so mm. i have to have kind of set quite a high target i mean if you live quite a frugal life or you're happy to adapt your life to be a bit more frugal, then that eases the pressure and the burden on you. But um, I think that's where, like something you know that you're doing, or um, with myself, you know, if if it's kind of working and doing something else, which is what most people will do, um, then at least you cover your bills. So if yeah, you know exactly. all your bills and, and your kind of day-to-day -day expenses are covered, and anything else is a bonus, immediately that puts the sort of pressure off you. So for me, that's kind of um, that's been an added stress. I mean, I I, I don't think about it so much, um, but towards the end of the month, it do that that does add like a massive amount of stress. Like if I haven't had a good month, it it does affect my mood for the last few days of the month. And you just kind of that you're just hoping, you know, that you're going to do well. But then the whole point of this method isn't about hope. It's kind of again about positive EV in the long run. So it gets irritating that you're kind of you're almost becoming like a cliche of a typical gambler you know you're just sort of like all right we're going to smash through this next few days you know it's, it's like oh, like an episode of only fools and horses or something you're just going to get there uh you know like across the line and it's ridiculous the amount of times where it's been the last day of the week or the last day of the month that's got me over the line and it's not intentional 
and it's not something I, I want, but but you know you're you're going to find that it is like you say it's it's, it's a roller coaster, and um, you need everything in your life to be set up for you. You need supportive people around you. Uh, you know, if you've got a partner, they don't have to understand the gambling necessarily. You know, the betting, but they need to be able to understand that you're not just Joe Bloggs going into a bookie's shop. And just you know punting on things randomly there is a method to what you're doing um you know you need do need to sort of sell the idea that actually you're taking this seriously it's a job like anything else you know you're um you're doing a job you're working hard on this and you're disciplined with what you're doing um but again that that's a challenge i mean that's something as well um from this year it has been a has has been a big frustration of mine my partner is very supportive but you know there's been other people but if not supportive, they just, you know, maybe don't, still don't understand what I'm doing. Um, yeah. But at a certain point, you just kind of think, what can you do? Yeah. And the last thing I wanted to say before, before we talk about what you're moving on to with your compiling is I, I think like a conversation like this is, is, is almost therapeutic, for, at least for someone like me, because I think, I think we, well, we, yeah. we spend so much time alone, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, it's mate, cool. you're in, you're in Qatar. I guarantee or I guess you don't have any sports betting friends in Qatar and no. uh, I've got no, basically no sports betting friends or at least anyone that does it on the level that I do in Australia. So it's like, you know, my... I thought everyone in Australia bets. I like, <laughs> yeah, know, but, no, but not, not on like a, on a, on a living kind of basis at least. I mean, we throw away our living over here, most of us. <laughs> um, but, yeah, just uh, like... You know, speaking to you know someone like yourself or you know all the other guys I'm I'm in contact with regularly, like just if if you go through losses together, it's it's so much nicer. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it sounds a bit weird, but it, it it can it's a it's a very very lonely lonely job. You spend a lot of time in in one room looking at two or three screens, um, and the only bit of interaction you get is telegram or something like that that's it. yeah it's yeah and it, and it's such a help like um you know, there's so many guys that I'm, I'm in touch with on telegram who just you know um great guys and and you know i hope when i'm back in the uk that i'll actually uh i'll you know make uh, you know, friends i'll meet in person you know through this and there's people i'll definitely keep in touch um there's people i'm kind of partnering up with as well through that and it's a great way to um you know to connect with people but yeah like you say it's it's quite isolating sometimes i mean i'm um i'm a bit of a social recluse recluse and an introvert so this kind of life suits me yeah uh but even then it's it's nice to, to talk to people but i mean definitely if you're the kind of person who likes an office environment you're quite social um then you know that that's a challenge i mean i was speaking to one guy i'm um, so someone who reached out to me from um um company called uh, bet connect i'll give them a little plug actually because um I think he mentioned he might be interested in having a chat with you uh and um again the, the you know the head of trading there he was professional trader himself um you know worked in the industry then i think for more than a decade he was just uh, trading himself at home and so i was interested to sort of see you know for, for him it was definitely because it was isolating he was doing well uh but it was just the, the fact that it was so isolating being at home and and then he kind of thought to himself do i want to be doing this so basically just working myself at home for the next 20 30 years um which is also a point to consider you know like i think okay fine great this year has been good if i was to carry on doing this for two years five years ten years you know or like yourself you know like if you sort of took the plunge any of us is it something you'd want to do for for the rest of your career or is it something you want to do for a couple of years and if you do well you know divert the profits into something else um or you know eventually return to the world of work i mean i guess i'm not i'm not sure myself yet you know maybe at one point in time i might want to go back into teaching um but i don't feel like i'm kind of at that stage anywhere near yet i still have i think there's a lot of mileage to go in this um, but yeah, you might you might get sick of it, you know. Not gonna lie, there are days I'm sure you feel the same. I'm sure there's users out there, especially when you're losing, where you just you stare at that screen, you know, 
that register trade and you click it and you click it and you're just looking and you're scanning through and you're faffing around with the presets and you know you just go into this kind of matrix zone where it's just like you know what what am i doing <laughs> like it just um and it's especially when it also, comes back and says nah mate you can have 20 bucks on that <laughs> yeah exactly you know it's just like grinding away for like three pounds on a I know that 89p on a Betway account, that's basically what I've got at the moment. But I'm determined, you know, if I have a free 10 minutes, I still, even if it's like two pounds, I'm just happy to be in profit over them. Um, yeah, no, exactly. So, so it, can, it, it can be a grind, you know. Um, so maybe, you know, it's something that people just, they won't enjoy. They like the idea. But doing this for, doing this for 10 hours a week, uh, and doing this for 30 or 40 is a very different thing because, that, um, again, if it's the dominant thing that you're doing with your time, you have to really enjoy it or enjoy the process, you know, have some music on, have something on Netflix or, you know, in the background or some podcast, listen to some podcast while you're doing it. Otherwise, it can be quite, you know, quite tedious for some people, for sure. Have some Eurovision on, mate. Yeah, exactly. Have some Eurovision on. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's talk. Let's talk quickly about um about your next step, mate. Odds compiling. Now you're uh, you're going over the other side of the fence, mate. As we like to as we like to say, it's quite disappointing. Yeah. I have to say, joining the dark side. <laughs> um, yeah. So so there are a few interesting roles available. It's, I, mean, I had some options. Um, some very interesting stuff, and and but this role, I, I don't want to say the company or anything just yet, uh, in case I'm crap at the job and they end up sacking me, I'll just look like an idiot. Um, but but yeah, no, very very interesting job. I will say this: they have been a guest on on the uh, on on the pod before. Um, so you know, is it down to up. about three people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, okay. so I might give it away. Um, but yeah, so basically, I'll, my my role will be um, compiling odds for um, for football, for particular niche markets, um, potentially in the future for like proposition bets, um, which is very interesting because it's something that I bet on myself. Um, I think there's genuine edges there with some providers at the moment. Uh, my hope is if I get that job, there'll be no edges for any of you. <laughs> I was just about uh, to say, and there's about to be a few more, mate. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. So, um, yeah, but, but well, at least with the, with the companies that we would provide the odds for, you know, if it's anyone else, then, you know, it's fair game. Um, so, so, yeah, so, that, so that's it all. I'm quite excited about that. Obviously, it's all dependent on when I can get back to the UK, if I can fly back then. So um, I'll have you know a little bit of time left, be able to you know do some sort of prep work and enjoy the Euros, and then it's going to be kind of full steam ahead. So yeah, it's it's it, for me it's a it's a dream job. It's watching football, studying football, you know, pricing up football um, all week long, and um, th there's lots of opportunities. And I mean, I did have interviews with with a few much bigger companies um, and offers from them, but for someone like me, I, I, this was kind of you know the right role for me. So that's also something if you're looking to get into the industry, have a think about what kind of company you want to work for. Um, you know, if you want to work for one of these massive companies, um, I'm not gonna lie because the perks are nice. You get very nice perks. The salary might not be amazing at first. Um, but you can progress pretty quickly. Like we were saying before, um, you know, the barriers to entry to, to joining the profession in a lot of ways for trading roles is quite low. As long as you've got like ha half decent mental arithmetic and uh, you like sports, you know, that sometimes and a degree it doesn't have to be a relevant degree. Um, you know, that that's enough to kind of um, to get your foot in the door. And from a lot of people on your um, on the podcast, on the videos, um, they've had similar routes into the industry. You know, there's been people again who've um, just got in, maybe sometimes accidentally or just out of uni or working in one of the, the betting shops and you know making their way in. Um, so yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited about it. Um, for me, also the fact that I can work from home is amazing. I don't have to commute into an office. Um, I, I can sort of, you know do the work, fit my um, my work around my life. 
Um, so to have an employer that will trust me to to get the job done and get it done to a high standard without watching the clock, um, that's you know that's a dream. So that was kind of yeah. a big fact for me. So um, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. There'll be sort of leagues that I'm not that familiar with um, that I'll need to kind of brush up on. Um, but it's yeah, exciting. It's um, something to look forward to, and I think I'll I'll learn a lot from the experience. Um, hopefully that'll improve my my own trading as well. Um, so something that might be of interest to people as well. They might be thinking, oh, if you get a job in the industry, does that mean you can't bet anymore? Um, so it, it depends on the company as well. Uh, so yeah, with, with this company, I um, I can with some providers. So there's a kind of list of companies that I I can't really be doing anything with, um, and but the exchange is, is is fine. It's not a problem, and there'll be other bookmakers that aren't their that aren't their clients so there's no conflict of interest there either um and yeah generally the attitude in the industry from what i've seen is that they generally don't mind as long as it's not affecting your work as long as it's not on the markets you're trading or you know um the, the markets that they're doing then you know you're kind of free to free to do that and supplement your income um you know via doing that all right. Well, I'm very excited to to follow the next stage, mate. I'm sure we'll be able to get you on at some point, mate, for a little recap on how it's all going and yeah. how you're finding the new job. And yeah, maybe you uh, continue to do a bit of sports betting too, and we can yeah catch up. I'm sure and share with everyone how it's going, and yeah, talk about some more sports betting stuff. So it's been a pleasure, mate. Is there anything else you wanted to to chat about today before? Uh, before we call it quits no just just want to say a big thank you to, to you know there's been like um lots of people who've reached out and at the start of this journey um i'm you know at the beginning i wasn't really sure what what i'd be doing with trade mate and you know these videos and everything else i'm not um i'm not someone who likes to necessarily be in the limelight um as strange as that sounds as a teacher and like being on all these videos um but yeah it's not like you know i'm not really doing this for the attention or anything it's just again if it helps people out um you know and then obviously i can't get all the trade mates i'm free alex has got to make me work for it as well so uh, you know this, this, uh, this has been sort of helpful i hope for promoting trade mate but yeah just just a thank you to people who've reached out to me um you know, for really nice messages, um, people who shared ideas, and and hopefully, you know, there's people out there that hopefully I've been able to help as well. Um, and it's been really nice. It's been it's been really nice to to share that. I think lots of positivity because, you know, we know what it's like in kind of like gambling Twitter and sort of social media. There's there can be a lot of negativity. Sadly, there are a few dickheads out there who just like to troll and just kind of i just i don't know it hasn't worked for them so they're just kind of bitter about it you know if it doesn't work for them then how can it work for anyone else and it's a shame that there's people out there but they're such as they're a small minority of the people i've dealt with and uh it's been really nice i think you know just seeing familiar names crop up when i when i tune into these live streams and i see you know familiar uh familiar names you know uh, faces you know uh, I'll give a few shout outs as well, you know, to like, uh, people like, the, like Carl, for example, as well. And, uh, and Ram, um, you know, especially, you know, lo lots of people, there's loads of other people as well. I don't want to forget names, but, um, just thank you really. Yeah. Just thanks for your support. Um, thanks for tuning in and generally, you know, I hope the stuff we've talked about, uh, with, uh, our podcast and all the others, you know, that you're going to make a success of this. Cause I genuinely think you everyone can i'm nothing special i'm not i'm not particularly bright i'm you know um maybe i'm a bit better at it than you alex but that's about it really <laughs> that's not very <laughs> that's hard mate much, yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah you know any anyone can do this you, you just want to have the motivation to do it um be humble learn you know grind away and you'll be able to do it. It's not that hard. So, so yeah, that's it really. Just thank you. And, you know, if you want to go on this journey, go for it. Um, feel free to, to reach out. I'll try my best to, to reply. Um, and good luck to all of you. And, yeah, hopefully I'll see you again at some point in the future.
Terrific, mate. It's been a pleasure catching up once again. Been a pleasure having you on the the YouTube channel, the podcast, live streams, all this stuff, uh, all your articles too, mate. All your uh, yeah contributions have been very well received by everyone, I think, and they've uh, yeah appreciated your time. So terrific stuff. And um, yeah, maybe just want to give a quick shout out to let everyone know where they can find you going forward or where you're best reachable. Uh, yeah, so you can find me on Twitter um, at my better life, um, better with an O, B E T T O R. Um, and I have a blog as well, same uh, mybetterlife.com. Is I haven't really updated it much lately, um, but. You'll see, you know, a few things on my Twitter articles I've done for TradeMate, a um, couple of them for, for Pinnacle and a few other sites too. So, um, yeah, if you enjoy it, you know, please like it, um, you know, send me some feedback. If you don't like it, that's fine. But just tell me what you don't like about it so I can improve it. And, um, uh, yeah, no, thank you for all the support. Awesome. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Do a quick rate and review if you can of the podcast and subscribe to us wherever you listen. Hit the like button. Give us all the love you can. It always helps. And of course, if you're looking to implement some of the strategies we talked about today or weekly on the podcast, more so the value betting ones, start a free week trial of TradeMate Sports. Neil, mate, been a pleasure and we'll talk soon. As always. Yeah. Take care, buddy.